God, laying your majesty aside. You reach down in love to show me life. Lifted from darkness into light. Oh, King for a slave, trading your righteousness for shame. Despite all my pride and foolish ways Caught in your infinite embrace oh, And I find myself here on my knees again Caught up in grace like an avalanche Nothing compares to this love, love, love burning in my heart. As director of African American Outreach with Priest for Life, and I'm also the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the daughter of his brother, Reverend A.D. King. And I came to Priest for Life several years ago after meeting Father Frank Pavone, the national director of Priest for Life. And uh, we were talking about life and my uncle Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy and how similar the philosophies of both were. Because my uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And as he said that, I thought about the little baby in the womb who has not been allowed to be born yet, alive, but not born. And so where are the civil rights for those little tiny babies in the womb? And who's going to speak out for the babies? And those are the types of questions that I've been asking for several years as director of African American Outreach for Priest for Life. And the effects of abortion, have, we have, we've only scratched the surface. And I think that we're going to see um, a, a volcano explosion of, of the effects of abortion. Uh, the shock waves, so to say, is, is silent no more. We talk about, um, for me, going out to the youth and doing this pro-life thing, you know, I created this line of pro-life t-shirts um, because I really wanted to create ways for young people to, to wear the message and spread that message. And as they started buying the t-shirts, many of them would come back to me and say, Brian, you know, I wore this t-shirt at home and I found out that my mom has had an abortion and that she just never told me. And to see the looks on their faces when they first find out, and I've talked to countless young people who are so deeply hurt when they realize they've lost a sibling, that, that their brother or sister before or after them is dead. And it's something that so many parents aren't thinking about when they when they have an abortion that one day they may have to tell their children this and i have a good friend who recently had to tell her children that she made that mistake and just dealing with her for the year of preparation and prayer that she went into before she told them and and that final time of okay it's it's time to, to tell them it was just heart-wrenching to think about knowing her kids, knowing her, knowing this family, and uh, knowing that her oldest kid was already becoming a pro-life activist and had no clue. So this is uh, something that I think needs to, to be explored, and I think that um, through Silent No More and Rachel's Vineyard, two of the, the ministries here at Priests for Life, that um, and, and through Stand True, we're, we're, we're definitely exploring that and looking into that to, to understand that even after we end abortion, there's going to be decades of, of hurt and pain that need healing. And um, it, I mean, look at, look at the healing that still has to happen because of slavery. 
Look at the healing that still has to happen because of the Nazi Holocaust. There's still pain. There's still so much going on because of those events so long ago. It still affects so many people today. And I think that it's going to be the same thing with abortion. It's going to affect those people. And it's very important for us to, to be prepared for that. When a woman is considering abortion, the pro-abortion side will say the fetus or the pregnancy. They'll, they'll use terms like that. Um, and I think as a pro-lifer, we always refer to those women as mom. Hi, mom. You know, what's, what's going on? I think telling them that they're a mother, conveying to them that they're a mother already is so important. Um, they, so many times a lot of people think, oh, just, just tell them, don't kill your baby, don't kill your baby, don't kill your baby. What they need to understand is that they are a mother. And we have to actually reach out to them, not just to the baby. And in sidewalk counseling, we think it's very important to first reach out to the woman and, and say, what's going on with you? How are you doing? What's going on in your life that would bring you here? Not just talk about that baby. Um, we need to connect her and, and, and then connect her to, their, to her child by calling her mom and referring to her as mom. So I think, it's, I think that's one of the most important things in, in dealing with a woman who's considering abortion is to, to, to make her understand what motherhood is and that she's already reached that, that point. Because uh, the, the other side will say, well, she's not ready to be a mom. Well, she is a mom. And uh, she has to now do what a mom does is to, to protect her child.
first think about what's an option. You know, the, because there, to me, there is no other option. There is only one option, and that's to not take the life of, of an innocent human being. Um, it's not about, well, you could do this or you could do that. Uh, we would never ask what's an, an option for a man not to rape a woman. The option is you don't do it. We'd never ask what's an option for a, a killer not to kill people. You, you, you don't kill people. The option is every human being is, is created by God and is an image bearer, the image of God. And to take an innocent human being's life is always wrong. There, abortion is never a necessary evil. So the options would be, what do you do with that child that's already created? It, it, whether you raise that child, give that child up for adoption, but uh, killing that child is just not on the table. It's not an option whatsoever. So we need to we need to put an end to the killing, and then also focus like like with the options on what we can do to help those children that are already here. And when, when people, because people always say, why don't you help children that are already here? Well, the children in the womb are already here. They are here. And so we need to be looking at them going, okay, what can we do to provide for them? From the moment that, 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 that sperm and that egg unite with 23X, 23Y chromosome to create that unique individual human person, they grow and develop. From zygote to embryo to fetus to infant to toddler to teenager to adult to senior citizen, every single stage I've mentioned there is an actual human being, an actual human person, not a potential human being. I've never heard of a human fetus suddenly becoming an ostrich. It's a human being. And so the option is, what can I do to provide for that human being, whether it be an adult man who's homeless on the street whether it be a, a, an orphan or whether it be a, a fetus that is in danger of losing their life. The option is, what do we do to save that life? What do we do to come in and, and provide for them? We are very involved in, um, in going to the abortion mill. Many of us here at Priest for Life go on a regular basis to pray and to get involved. Um, our youth outreach, uh, the, the, the missionaries in our youth office go three times a week to, to pray and counsel at the abortion mill. And um, I think it's one of the most important parts of pro-life work. And for somebody who maybe not work in a pro-life organization in their office, they can get involved by being the church on the streets, by taking the, the, the light into the darkness. You have to remember that um, the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. That's when, when Jesus turned. Now, if you think about that really carefully, the gates of hell, what do gates do? Gates keep people out. Gates are not something that we're hiding behind and hell won't prevail against us. When, the, when, when he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against us, that means we're on the offense. We're attacking the gates of hell. And the abortion mill, that's the gates of hell. That's the gates of hell. And we need to be on the offense. We need to be there in front of that place, bringing light into the darkness. Darkness is not the opposite of light. It's the absence of light. And, and, and we have the light of Christ. And we need to bring that light to the very darkness, the very gates of hell, and they shall not prevail against us. The African American community living in the United States of America has been disproportionately targeted for abortion. And that was part of a movement by Margaret Sanger who founded Planned Parenthood. And she felt as though there were separate races on the planet. Of course we know there's only one human race. We have various communities. And so the African American community she thought was an undesirable population and she wanted to reduce that population 
by offering the deception of abortion and uh, contraceptives that were going to be harmful to the life of the baby and the mother. And so that agenda has been very harmful to America and to the world, especially to the African-American population in the United States because African-Americans, we make up 13% of America's population and yet almost one-third of abortions happen in African-American communities. And so it's very unfortunate that there was an agenda by an organization who wanted to control the population and uh, to target specifically the African-American population. Silent No More is um, uh, men and women and, and grandparents and people that have been affected by abortion, whether they've had an abortion, their, their, their spouse has had an abortion, uh, their child has had an abortion, um, that have been through healing um, and are now using that to speak out, to, to help other people uh, from, from not making that mistake. You have to see the stories on the website. It, it, they're just absolutely heart-wrenching, but they're inspiring at the same time. I think it's the uh, greatest uh, way of new evangelization, as uh, uh, the Catholic Church is doing, uh, to bring people back to the pew as well. So many people have been alienated uh, from God and from the church because of abortion. They think it's the unforgivable sin. So with the Silent No More Awareness campaign, we encourage uh, people to join the campaign who've had abortions, who've gone through healing. And even if they haven't found healing yet, we help them find that healing. We have the largest uh, search engine uh, for healing. Uh, they can go to our website, silentnomore.com. And uh, actually, the specific pages would be abortionforgiveness.com. They put in their zip code, and they can find what's the healing resources right in their community. Because the goal of the campaign is to reach those through the testimonies of the women and men who have been healed who speak, is to reach those who were like they were. They thought it was the unforgivable sin. They thought there was no hope. They thought that God couldn't forgive them. So I feel very privileged to have founded this campaign with George Forney of Anglicans for Life, and it has grown immensely. Uh, we've held uh, over 1,500 gatherings uh, since the campaign began worldwide. Uh, the campaign has reached in all 49 states in the United States, not, not quite all 50 yet, but that's a goal. Uh, and we're in about seven countries. Uh, so if you go to our website, silentnumors.com, you can get in-depth information. The healing resources, you can listen to testimonies. Uh, we have thousands of uh, written testimonies. We have close to 400 video testimonies of uh, men and women. And nothing, I think, can convince a person, first of all, to come back to healing, but to also to stop another woman from making that mistake. If they listen to the voice of experience, someone who's had an abortion and say, don't go down this road. I know from my experience, I was hurt. Besides, I grieving still the death of my child. Many of these women were hurt physically. Many of these women were unable to conceive a child when they wanted it because of damage done to their abortion. Uh, many of them had psychological problems, suicidal thoughts, uh, suffered from depression, anxiety, anorexia. So many of the problems we see in our society today, the underlying cause is abortion. And so in a campaign, they're speaking out. Uh, to reach those who are, A, still hurt in that unforgivable sin, but they want to stop women from having abortions. You know, to don't make the mistake we made. Don't go down the road. It's a dead end. I myself was away from the Catholic Church for over 20 years. You know, when I was in high school, I just, I was in Catholic schools my whole life. College, grad, you know, graduate, all college, Catholic schools. But I got caught up in the, the culture of the 70s and basically said, oh, I don't agree with the church on this and that, the other thing. And I was away for about 20 years. I never had an abortion, but, oh, I pr took birth control pills. I, did, you know, I didn't agree with the church. But I had an awakening. Uh, and through that, I came back to the church. I was, became aware of the abortion problem. I wasn't even aware of it. And once I realized and saw the depth of this problem, I actually gave up my, my full-time job as a New York City public school teacher. I gave that up in June of 2000 and committed my life to uh, really just working to bring an end to abortion and to heal the, the women who were hurt from it. The most common argument for abortion is what about a, a child who is a product of rape, who is a, a product of rape? And, and I, I refuse to use that term, product of rape. No human being is a product of rape. Unfortunately, rape is, is a horrible, horrible act that does happen, 
but that human being is a human being. That human being is, 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 is again, it's created, that child is created by God. We cannot punish the innocent child for the sins of the father. We cannot take, but this man on earth here did to some other human being, this violent act, and then create another violent act on another human being because of what this human being did. It, it just makes no sense to me whatsoever that, that we would heap one act of violence on top of another act of violence. The fact is, it's that, that, that child, while the conception may not have been the, uh, you know, a perfect situation, the conception was, was, happened in a horrific situation, the conception happened, the life was created. And therefore, that life must be valued also. To, to, to devalue that life is, is to, to, to deny God and to devalue God. pro-life youth work for uh, over 20 years and um, this is one of the most exciting times to, to be in this kind of work because of technology because of uh, the the avenues that we now have to unite pro-life youth from from around the world when I first started this I, I knew a few people here and there and I would go to different events and stuff and and I would meet people at different events and hear about other things but now everybody's connected and through social media um i see just this huge uprising of pro-life youth who now go oh there's others that, that that believe the same thing and realizing most people do i just see it as a, as a fascinating time to 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 be a young pro-lifer um, to have the, the support they have um, from their peers. I really believe that that's going to help this generation to, to truly end abortion. One thing that my work as director of African American Outreach for Priests for Life entails is to say to the African American community, you're not alone, you are loved. We know that you need what every American needs, what every human being needs uh, a safe and secure home, an opportunity to work and be productive in society. You need a strong family. We would like for that to happen with the father and the mother together making decisions to birth and raise children. And so when we give the African American community that good news, that it is possible for you to contribute to society, to um, marry and have your babies and raise your children, that is your civil right, that is a human right. And when people hear that good news, as we have promoted throughout our work here at African American Outreach with Priests for Life, using such projects as My Alpha 21, and uh, that's a film, on genocide in America, 
uh, the Blood Money film, uh, the books by Father Frank Bavone, Janet Morana, and all the associates here. I have a wonderful book myself called King Rules. It's about growing up in the family that birthed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so I don't only speak to the African American community, but the human community. And so I believe that we are one human race and that if we can live together and love each other, that we will be better off. Find myself here on my knees again Caught up in grace like an avalanche Nothing